My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire Downfall. It is time to jump back into this game, which has had a ridiculous amount of updates over the period of time that I have been on holiday. I am now back here in the recording chair, doing my whole, my whole full-time schedule. So we'll have a lot more Downfall coming out relatively soon. I know that there have been a ridiculous amount of updates, because I'm pretty sure it was like... 2.0 and now it's 3.02 and then i did a thing where i went to that and then that and then i clicked that and then i looked a little and then there's another character already it naturally seems like oh whoops of course that happens it happens every single time it naturally seems like all of the bosses are being accounted for here So I think what we're going to have to do here is take the champ. Okay, cool. I'm going to take some damage. Excellent. Oh, wait. I'm not letting anyone vote on these. I'm going to take improvising. Cool. And I'm going to go to Abandon Run and see if this did it. And it did. New character unlocked. The Automaton. I'm not even finished chewing and digesting my previous meal of the champ and here we are with a new automaton as well obviously we'll have a few episodes focusing on the automaton and then probably back to jumping between the champ and the automaton for a little period of time uh at least until i get everyone to a similar ascension level right so 10 10 you're on six you were introduced a little later as well and i'm a little less familiar with you so that makes sense maybe i just get the uh the automaton to six and then we go back to a standard rotation but i'm getting ahead of myself here the automaton the city's mechanical guardian adapts to any combat situation bronze core the first function this is a unique keyword you create each combat costs one less the turn it is created let's dive in at least confront the first intruder locked can't be chosen on the first run interesting uh duh, duh. okay we have four strikes four defense the art for these is ridiculously good we have a replicate deal four damage encode this is a unique keyword which says add the card to the sequence so encode i imagine is the card that is being played is added to the sequence when three cards are in the sequence their effects other than encode are merged into a function okay so we've seen that heard before as well uh, with costs equal to the highest cost card in the sequence Encode, then add a copy of this to your discard pile. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so it seems like you are formulating cards on the fly using individual cards in your deck. Go to, draw one card, encode, compile. An additional effect that triggers when this card, while in the sequence, is combined into a function. Okay, so combine, uh, so while I combine this into a function, it will give me the next turn, draw one card. It won't do that when I play the function itself. The upgrade for go to is two cards, two cards on either of those, and then replicate upgrades for two more damage. Obviously, you gotta get the max HP there, no real choices. Okay, I like the idea of trying to go down the, the elite line there. But I do have the ability to bail and then just go for two shops, try and get early on those fights. I could even bail after the second elite and go for a shop, so it feels like that's definitely our path. I do like the idea of recalling, getting the early ruby key, breaking it relatively early as well, but on this path, I actually don't have the opportunity to break it for a really long period of time unless I actually avoid most elites. So for that reasoning, I'm probably going to go... Uh, I mean... So, go to encodes, so does replicate, but currently I don't have... Well, I guess if I have replicate creating another copy of itself, I do have the ability to create functions right now. And I don't really like upgrading base strikes or base defense. Maybe when I know the character a lot better and I'm like, oh, we need a little bit of damage early on and we can't necessarily get that from the default set or some such like that, but uh, there's a later consideration. Um, let's, let's go replicate at the moment. Considering if I ever make a function, it is going to have two replicates in it at the moment. So here's the function up here. Uh, we can also see the sentries holding each of the individual cards. 
Draw a card and code cool. So let's definitely defend, replicate. We'll go to, which also encodes. And then I guess we're just looking to get back to replicate so we can get this. Oh, and it shows us even the function that is being generated. Uh, so this would be a zero cost attack because of the bronze core. Okay, so it's showing me in the green mana color there um, that it would have been one cost. However, it is going to be zero cost because of the bro uh, bronze core. I like that that's reflected in the design here. Um, so it's going to be deal six damage or one card. Nice. It's not a bad card. Encode, then add a copy of this into your discard pile. Interesting. Is this also going to add a copy of itself into the discard pile? The uh, copying sprint there? Hmm. We shall see. So it draws, uh, deal six draws one, deal six again. It does not add an additional copy of itself to the discard pile. Wait. When three cards are in the sequence, their effects other than in code are merged into a function. Okay. So their effects other than in code are merged into a function so you can't have some sort of a, a heavy recursive going on. Um, but I imagine that when the text is written encode comma continue because it can't do the first step it can't do the second right so then is conditional in this circumstance um so this card says deal six damage when it becomes a function and that is exactly how i've seen it function so far the first episodes of any new character are a lot of me trying to get all of these kinds of uh these edge cases sorted out for myself um, so that then I can go on to utilize them in clever ways, hopefully at least. Uh, buggy mess, insert a random status. Status. Status cards are removed. Well, okay, well, that's the other status. Insert. Add a card to your draw pile. Oh, okay, so it act so it is talking about the base game version of a status. Good. Don't like, um, overloading those kinds of things. Uh, so that, that, that makes sense. Insert is just the keyword for adding a card to your draw pile. Nice. I I got a uh, a mod a while ago that was made by Murderous Duck that was just a keyword that was fetch. And fetch was uh, for pulling a card from a specific pile. So like uh, if you're, you know, search your deck and take a card out, it would be fetch from your deck, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I, I do like that being, uh, being made into a keyword here. Um, gain in energy and codes itself. Okay, so... The encoded version of Buggy Mass would also give us another status, so we would really need ways to deal with those statuses. That's a lot of trashing we would end up doing. Repair, gain six block and code, and then when compiled, it gains seven HP. I like that. Upgrades to 10 HP. So it's a weak block card that gives you later a large heal. Front load, gain 12 block and code. Compile has the function gains retain. Ooh. Okay, so this is a giant block on one turn, and then it's a giant block delayed for another turn as well. Um, buggy mess also becomes zero cost after that, right? So you can lower the cost of the function you're creating with it, especially. Also, so it actually is an energy boost when you're putting it into the function itself, right? Initially encoding it. Let's take repair. Uh, I'm going to want to try and find some damage cards, if at all possible here, though. Hey, Pentagraph! Not bad, not bad. In fact, I'd even go so far as to call it good. One of the reasons I want to repair here as well is just so that in the first cycle I can encode and use a function. Uh, okay. So I can kill a target on the board here. Replicate, strike, strike. I'm going to do that. I'm also going to repair. I will take one damage as a result of that, but then we have the compile effect of it coming out as well. Cool. Hmm. So wait, that card exhausts? Encode. Add it to the sequence. They're merged into a function card. Oh! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, okay, okay! 
they're consumed by that happening. Replicate is good because it gives you the ability to continually have an extra card to go into another function later. Okay. So it doesn't trash your deck as much as I would have thought to have effects like that. Deeply interesting. There's dep uh, Deprecate there. Apply week one to all enemies in code. Compile is also game week. Hmm. Okay. Well, you usually want to play the compiled function on the turn that you get it. So this would make damage functions less powerful. Pretty significantly. Bug barrage, add a wound to hand, deal seven damage for each status card in hand. Okay. Great. So add two wounds to your hand and then do it. So that's you know, obviously 14 damage already by base. Uh, flail, deal six damage to all enemies two times. I'm going to click this, um, encode, and then compile to gain an artifact. Gain two artifact. This is very similar to one of the, uh, colorless boss cards, in fact. But kind of reformatted such as to work with your automaton. Move a card from the deck or gain ten. Removing cards from the deck here seems, like, premium. Just because every removal gives us the ability to get closer to our next encode as quickly as possible. And that really feels like the way to kind of derive power out of this at the moment. Uh, I'll take a strike, I think, out of there. Uh, I'm just going to defend, defend, repair. I don't need to be hasty about this. That's the enemy's largest attack as of this point. Uh, replicate and go to, clearly. And then we draw into a new deck. Do I want to put new strikes in the new deck? Or do I just want to get to flail and replicate soon? Flail and replicate soon, I think. Alright, so... Actually, we'll just go flail and strike kill. Don't need to spend too much time in that fight. Sticky Shield. Gain 11 block. Insert a slimed. That is one of the statuses. Uh, upgrades to 14. Oof. One energy to block 14 is pretty good. If you can downplay the downside of this, then I'm happy to go for something like that. It feels like I'm going to need to see the power set for this character and whether or not that has some interaction with uh, you know, your statuses in your deck and stuff like that um, before this is something that I'm really keen to take. Fortify, deal 8 damage, and code. When you compile, you gain 2 upgrades to 3 decks. Yes. 100%. Letter Opener and Sapphire Key. I feel like Letter Opener is almost always pretty useful. I don't really need to do repair until the second cycle, right? Oh, but I can also just replicate, repair, and fortify right now. Deal six damage to the enemy. Don't heal seven. And just miss out on that. Uh, but I do get the two decks from this. The thing is, it's going to cost one as a result of fortify being two cost. And then after that, it's going to cost two every time to deal eight damage, block four. So deal 14 damage and block four for two energy. Oh, it's actually block six because the compile will have gone off by that point. Yeah, that's not bad. That's 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 not bad. Unless I want to try and cycle and do this all a lot slower. But the way that I'm currently doing it will give us a replicate in the next cycle as well as go to and flail, which is fine. I'm I'm happy with that. Almost certainly go to defend, defend, unless this gets flail. Uh, I could just eat 18 right now. That's not... Not awful, but I do have two more elites coming up. Fine. I'll block. That also does five damage to them, so... Not so bad. I've taken that. Okay, we're well within the realm of being able to heal back up pretty easily. Hey, this is going to give us an artifact to try and prevent one of the downsides coming out here. 
You love to see it. Unfortunately, can't play that though. So what I've really done here, what I've really accomplished is upgrading a fair few of the cards in my base deck. That's that's really what I've done. Okay. That gives me a reasonable understanding of this. Uh, man. I think it's just going to be triple defend here. This would have been 15 damage, but this prevents all 18 and deals 5. I am worried about the amount of damage that's coming out of the enemy and the fact that I'm not really doing as much back. In fact, increasingly, I'm doing less and less. Um, pretty sure I can still make it through, but... Not ridiculously comfy, you know? Why do you have to have regen? There you go. Replicate him for damage. All right, we'll be out of here. Dream catcher, as well as emerald. There we see delayed slice deals three damage in code. Compile all enemies lose six HP. Upgrades to ten. Ooh. That's not half bad. Try and make a bunch of zero cost sequences that have draw in them as a result of go to, I guess. There's also wild beam, deal 10 damage in code, uh, and then you compile to insert a wound, upgrades to 13 damage. Yeah, you would really, really, really have to have a way to benefit from wound to want to take that, at least. Again, I, I said this in the Tomacrops episode today, but. Everything that I'm saying at the moment is based on very, very little knowledge at the moment. So it's for my playstyle, in my opinion, at this point in time with the amount of knowledge I currently have. None of this is a value judgment. Let me be very, very clear about that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a delayed slice. See what we can do with it. Mmm, getting a free ship every single turn is nice, but I also still do really want to trade that Broken Wing statue to the Cultists on floor two. And seeing how we're kind of giving a little bit of a nui to this Cultist here, maybe we, uh... Maybe that gives us a little bit of a flavor reason to go in that direction. Grim Forge. Through secret passages known only to the constructs of the Spire, you enter a chamber designed for the maintenance and repairs on automaton models. The tools available here will certain uh, will be of certain use to you. Uh, don't have a rare card, unfortunately. Gain bottled code at the start of... Uh, sorry, upon pickup, choose a card within code. Start each combat with that card already in sequence. Not bad. It's also transmute, remove a card, gain a random card within code. Um, I think I'm going to go bottled code. Having it already in sequence, eh? That's fortify. Surely that's fortify. So that I can very, very quickly get my decks off. With the magic tongs, you carefully embed a weapon directly into your core. Bzzzt. Seems like coding yourself is not as easy as you thought. Isn't it? Didn't we just do it? Uh, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Interesting turn. Okay, so... Fortress is coming back with 8 damage. If I put Flail up there and then I put Repair up there, I actually won't have the ability to cast the card that comes back. Uh, but if I put Flail and then Delayed Slice up there, I can put Replicate into the next one and then I have the ability to cast the card that comes back. But um, Okay. And then... It's 8, and then 12 by 2. I mean, the flail is already going to be enough. So we target the backliner huh, and do that, and then that goes there. Unfortunately, that means we can't get the repair off unless we get, like, really good defensive turns. I don't know. Maybe we do get really good defensive turns. Come on. Never mind. Yeah, there it is. All's well that ends well, I guess. Reserved Insect. Enemies Elite Combats have 25% less HP. Very, very glad to see that one right there. New card, Oil Spill. Deal 4 damage and apply 4 Poison. End code. It also compiles to insert a Slime. 
Poison is nice. Be uh, holding off at the moment though. This one feels like a double defense hit. I'd like to exit this fight with close to max HP. If not max HP itself. All right. Seven down. Look, it could be a lot worse. Got a machine oil. Increase all numbers on cards in sequence by one. Oof. So it's mana cost, like every number, right? Mana cost included. Mm. Seems a bit rough. Um, bit shift. Choose a card in the sequence to return to your hand. It gains retain. Upgrades to retain itself. Card in the sequence to return to hand. So that would be a card that has like a giant upside, but it then encodes for a downside afterwards. Like the the it, it putting itself in encode is bad because it's removing itself from your deck in some fashion, possibly. Um, cut through, deal five damage, scry two, encode, compile, draw one card. It's pretty good. Scry three, even on the upgrade. Okay, that gives you the ability to start managing the statuses you should have to put in your deck. So taking it now gives me the ability to play in that way. Um. It feels like I want to and don't want to use repair here. I look, I'm actually I'm I'm gonna quickly use the machine oil just so I know the numbers that got affected. Okay, so it didn't increase the mana cost. It did increase damage and then the compile as well, which is good. Yeah, uh, so it's it's everything except for mana cost. Um Yeah, I guess. Flail Adam, so I don't have any uh, any vulnerability to worry about in the upcoming turn. Oh wow, I actually do get the ability to heal out of this. I really was not expecting that. Huh. All's well that ends well there. Vajra for the extra point of strength I was looking for earlier. Overheat. Take four damage. Deal 18. You encode, and in a compile, you insert a burn plus. Wow. Is it difficult for this character to deal damage? That is... That is rough stuff. Follow through is uh, deal some damage, gain four. If the last played card was a function, play this gain. I like that, because this is multiple triggers of the block, which is extremely good with the, the decks that we already have added. Add a random card with encode to your hand, it costs zero. Get latest. Honestly, get latest is super, super neat as well. I'm going to take follow through. Hmm. I guess I repair and strike follow through. Wait, you're counted as an elite? Late slice, flail. Not really seeing any block. So I guess I should probably go to. There's some of it. There's a touch more. And we'll start building the next function up. I'm finding everything really intuitive so far. Hit him with that flail, and then uh, another kick, because I couldn't pay the function. Yeah. That's enough damage for me. Digital Carnage. Deals 20 damage in codes. Function gains ethereal. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Uh, delayed guard. 
His next turn, gain seven block upgrades to nine and code, another zero cost. So I'm, I'm seeing a theme here of because the function takes the cost of the highest cost card in the function, you want either a function that has zero costs across the board or a function that has two costs or three costs across the board, right? Um, two costs across the board is ideal here on the first floor for me at the very least, because then if I play the final two costs to encode a function on a turn, and then I get it returned to my hand and the bronze core activates, then it comes back and it is one cost and I can cast it. Um, boost. Gain eight block, encode, compile, gain two strength. As much as I want digital carnage here, boost is exactly the kind of thing we're trying to play into right now. Nate, let's go left to right. Uh, backtrace, innate deals seven damage, encodes, has compile function gains exhaust. Neat, totally fine. I, I really like the kind of like aping of a lot of cards that already exist in the base game that, are, that is happening here because you get to approach them in this class in an entirely new way. Uh, find and replace. Ethereal, put a card from your hand, oh, sorry, from your draw or discard pile into your hand. Uh, add a dazed where it was. Upgrades to retain instead of being ethereal. Interesting. It's also deprecate, we've seen before. Optimize, upgrade the next three cards you encode that can be upgraded. Upgrades five after that. I don't think we're going to take that, but the only reason is because I think we're going to take this. Flash of Steel deals three damage and one. We've seen that before. Never mind. Uh, I'm going to click the Potheosis right there. And I think I'm going to bounce. I think I'm going to try and look for expensive cards to put into my uh, my function more consistently here. Uh, okay. Well, look, I've got Pantograph. I don't need to worry about the damage I'm about to take. It's Apotheosis Defense. I would love an energy relic so I can play two two costs on the same turn. That would be transformative the way that we play. Hugely so. Break. Deal 15 damage from one energy, upgrades to 18 in code. Compile, insert four random status cards. Oof. But it's rare. But I desperately don't want to have it. I'm going to skip all of these. Just for the moment. Ooh. Defect on floor one with a different deck. Ooh, what's going on here? Uh, I guess let's cut. Th well, that's a... I want to encode that. Not really, but... More than I don't want to encode that one, I want to get to the the punch that we put in the deck. So I'm going to drop both of those cards. And I guess just follow up with damage. Uh, boost. Boost Y. In the same hand as Apotheosis, no less. Well, I guess I go repair and then boost. And then do I have another encode in the next cycle? I do flails. Okay, it's, it's this isn't going to be awful. It's not going to be incredible either. Did the enemy put a void into my deck? Energy Thief, whenever Defect generates a void, it goes to the top of your draw pile. Have they, like, fundamentally changed all of the... All of the bosses? I gotta admit, I'm getting hype. Hmm. It's gotta be boost, right? No, because I don't need to compile for the strength right now. can block 20, or I can just block 10. I mean, look. 
we're not actually threatened here, but I should learn how to play by trying to play well. If at all that's possible. These voids are really rough for me right now. Because I got all the two costs I want to play, but obviously when you've increased your strength and dex, other things are sometimes more efficient, if not often more efficient. Okay. I will boost. I will repair. Gaining some stats, and then the copying slice that is a three hit. Benefits from the extra strength three times there. And now it feels like we're kind of sitting pretty. I guess this is probably going to have a dual cast or some such at the very end. So we are on a clock. Should keep our eye out for that. Let's go flailing boost and then follow through there. I love follow through with the two different things that are upgrading our stats on compile. They are fortify and boost, fortify and boost, fortify and boost. Got to get these locked away, you know? There's our kill. Sentient form. The first time you create or draw a function each turn, increase all numbers on it by one. We just confirmed that that does not count cost. Spaghetti code. Until the sequence is full, choose one of three random cards, swing code. Neat. So if you have an empty sequence, this is really when you're going to want to cast that. Uh, find and replace. We've seen that one before. Sentient form upgrades to remove ethereal. But... What? Why... Why is it shown in this way? Huh. Usually, like, the text for Ethereal would just disappear. Uh, spaghetti code decreases the cost. Find and replace. Removes Ethereal and replaces it with Retain. I mean, look. Sentient form, right? If we want to run a thin deck that is trying to... Uh, trying to exploit follow-through as well as... Uh, the boost fortify and then just building cards. Sentient form. But the things that we get... Hang on. Yeah, the things that we get from functions are typically just straight up damage, right? Go to obviously draws a card, but the rest of them tend to just be straight up damage or straight up defense. So it seems like this is actually a very, 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 very slow way uh, to try and create uh, strength or dex in this deck for us right now. Obviously, if we had things that said, you know, more things at least, that said draw a card or apply weak to all enemies or some such like that, increasing those effects by one is huge. It's just the ones that we have access to aren't giant. Um... Gosh, I wonder if that means then for we uh, take the spaghetti code. Right? One of three random cards to encode. Could constantly choose it myself. Yeah, let's do it. If you give me Sneko, I'm going to be mad about it. You didn't give me Sneko. Thank you. I'm not mad about it. Uh, tiny house is here, as well as the tiny bowler hat and the cursed key, which we'll probably be taking here. Energy seems like it's just so damn important. And I can manage the removals of some curses. Maybe even avoid taking a, uh, uh, a chest, perhaps. Definitely going to be starting here. Would like to fight again. Gain a dex, break the ruby key, or rather gain the ruby key, break the emerald key here. I really want Apotheosis upgraded. But I just picked up energy. I can do that in the next one. Getting the strength and dex is too big to ignore. Let's use go to. 
wow, we got exactly the two cards I didn't want to have. Like, perfectly the two. <sighs> so rude. Um, sure, I guess I'll put that in so that I can actually cast the card that comes back. There you go. Got that. Spaghetti code could lean into follow through this turn. Sure. Uh, deal eight, encode, compile, insert a void. No. Uh, I don't need to block next turn, so I guess I just cut through here. Don't want another dark dash. It's the blade slice. Then hit him with that. Hit him again. You best believe we're going to hit him one more time. Hey, Solid Sprint, another follow through. Love it. Uh, probably should just leave the damage atop the deck. We're getting real close to killing this merchant. In fact, if I'd used the Fear Potion at the start of this fight, we probably wouldn't have the kill, but it wouldn't be extremely far. Right, 240. Bugger, we may have actually had the kill had I done that. At least we know it's only one more shot now. Fine tuning. Increase the numbers on all cards in sequence by one. Again, that does hit the... Uh, that does hit the compile effect of increasing our decks. So it does have value in that way. Take it. Okay, left to right again. Overheat, we've seen before. Get latest, we've seen before. Deprecate and delayed slice, we've seen before. Class default. Add a copy of the first card in the current sequence to the next two sequences automatically. Please. Please. That's so much dex. Oh, I want it so bad. I don't want anything else here, though. Just making sure there wasn't a new relic there. <gasps> yeah. Finally got it to happen. Let's return the statue. Bird God! Return! <laughs> Wading through the cheering cloud of cultists, you soon come face to face with the leader. A well-dressed cultist hands you an ornate dagger. You take the dagger, unsure of exactly what is about to transpire. The cultist leader reaches into his robe and offers you a blue oily mixture. The cultists surrounding the leader provide him with replacements, and soon, with his own dagger and potion in hand, he gestures for you to follow in his actions. Upgrade the ritual dagger. Mimicking the cultist leader's ritual process, you uncork the potion and gently pour a small amount of it over the blade. The steel seems to glow an eerie hue in the cathedral's light. Without a single word or gesture from the cult leader, two cultists set forward, one to you, one to him. It's now painfully clear what they want you to do. Kill the cultist with the ritual dagger plus. You plunge the dagger into the cultist's heart. The ritual is completed, and the surviving cultists could not appear happier. They wave their sticks in celebration and continue to call out in a cheering call as you exit the cathedral. So it gives you an upgraded ritual dagger that has already killed an enemy as well as a cultist potion. That's pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. <laughs> Should I replicate go to? Mm, let's definitely go to. Okay, that's an apotheosis right there. Hmm. So if I apotheose and then replicate. Actually, can you upgrade a function when it comes back to you? Okay, I'm going to replicate, and then apotheose. No, you cannot. Then hit that target two times and put it on the ground. It's worth doing just to know, right? Got to find these things out. Flail. Ooh, I like flail. Uh, although that and then fine-tuning, I'm not even going to be able to do.
That's fine. We'll flail. Cut through to put someone on the ground. And then a... Defend and fine tuning even there is fine, I guess. Tuning, I mean. It's fine tuning. I like the naming of each of these functions. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess we can throw repair in there. Sure. Go to the ritual dagger. Use that for a kill. Take him down. Okay, deprecate four loop. This is a uh, X cost. Nice. Uh, the next card you encode causes X additional copies to be encoded. Exhaust. Ooh. Oh, that's wild. You could do this in a turn's delay. Cast it for two. Next turn, cast a encode card for two. Have a full card that is just that two cost again and again and again. Seems good. Cultist Strike. Deal six damage. Encode. Compile. Increase this card's damage by one permanently. I, like, for theming, I'm compelled to go for the Cultist Strike here. But other than that, I'm compelled to go for nothing. I guess maybe I could utilize the full loop. What are you when upgraded? Retain. It'll just increase damage by base when you're upgraded. We just don't... Like, it compiles one each time, right? So every single battle, because after you compile this card, it's not coming back to you uh, without any additional thing that I am not aware of yet. Um, it means every single battle this can increase by one maximum. It's 50 something floors. I don't, I don't think I really have time to get value out of that. Oh, but maybe it doesn't need to be, you know, the be-all, end-all. Maybe a, a card that deals 14 and 15 and stuff like that is good enough, right? Because it does even go into the, the thing that it gets encoded into as well, right? So you're double dipping on the damage increase, right? You get the initial cast and then you get the, the function cast as well. Maybe I'm being harsher on that than I should. I still don't think I take it here. It's either that or the... Uh, sorry, it's either the for loop or nothing, I think. And I think it should be nothing. Remove all strikes. Receive three upgraded tackles. Look, I like getting the strikes out of the deck as much as the next person, assuming the next person is also me. But it doesn't decrease the size of our deck at all. It does give us a little bit more access to damage, and damage is a little bit of a problem for us. Ooh, do they change the card border for this to be a little bit more slimy? I like that. Um, I mean... I encode for defense. Maybe just having some, some tackles is fine. Sure. Let's do it. I feel like I uh, take that event too, uh, too rarely. I want to take it a little bit more commonly. Uh, I don't want to steal six cards here. That'd be a curse that I don't want to have to have. Gain a strength. Transform a status in your hand into a copy of this. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, we're starting to see the status payoff cards. There's a go-to mutator as well. Um, not going to be focusing around that deck, so I'll look for other cards. There's a go-to if I really want to take it. Enlightenment, delayed block. Uh, I don't think I want the delayed guard. Return. What was that? Gain energy and draw additional something. Uh, at the start of your next X turns. Did not manage to perfectly track it all. Hey, yeah, blue candles. I can deal with the uh, the curse I just got. Love it. Able to get rid of the shame that way. Always looking for a good way to get rid of the shame. Um, spaghetti code into follow through does this turn. Oh, a fortify. I love it. A boost. Oh my god. We do solid fortress and then follow through. Get kicked. Look at that. We're scaling now. So boost is 13 block by itself. I don't really want to flail here if it can be avoided. Hmm. 
to fine tune. Let's, let's go to play boost fourteen. Uh, draw a card as well. Okay. I'm gonna make the enemy vulnerable. Use that hit and then kill with the ritual dagger. I just want to get the uh, scaling on that. Oh, Mori negate the next curse you obtain. Thank you. There's another fortify. Love it. Return. Finally, we get to look at you in a little bit more uh, detail here. Gain an energy and draw an additional card at the start of your next X turns. Gain an energy. Again, strikes out the text rather than removing it. Strange. Uh, it's an X cost. We did take energy and we may even take energy for the next, uh, the next boss as well. You gain an energy after casting it as well. So you'd still have the ability to play, you know, a, a decreased function or a defend even afterwards. There's also bronze armor, gain an artifact. You encode and all enemies gain two artifacts. Upgrades to give them one artifact after that. Oof. Well, actually, no, not oof, right? So this seems oof on the first read to me because I was like, wait a second, but... But, but, but this is just one artifact for me. It's not just one artifact for me. Again, you're double dipping on the things that get encoded and actually get to double trigger that effect. So not the compile and stuff like that, but the, the text prior to encode itself. Got it. Um, I will be taking return here though. I really, really, really wanted that fortify, but honestly, I kind of just want to put a different card in the deck at this point. I imagine, uh... You know, if this was my 15th episode with the character, I would have taken the Fortify. Okay, so the cost for the ultimate thing here, is that going to be the base cost of the card or the assigned cost of the card? How will it work with randomization and cost decreases in hand? That's a good question to be asking at this point. So the only problem is... Uh, I get no information from it here. Nothing I just did is actually going to give me a clue. Ah, huh? this does though. Delayed slice one and it gives me a one back. Okay, so it takes the assigned cost at time of cast, it looks like. Uh, 35. 20. Okay. Defend. Tackle. Kill. Vexing Draft. Gain two strength and two dex. Add two burn plus statuses to your draw pile. There's also max output. Draw three cards. At the start of each turn, draw one additional card and insert a dazed. Zero cost on the upgrade. Nice. Nice. Um, branch. Choose. Deal 11 damage or gain 10 block. Encode the, chosen, uh, the not chosen option. Ooh, and that's pre-upgraded as well. Fine tuning is also there. Honestly, I'm I'm a little disincentivized to take branch just because I'm trying to go for the whole idea of like expensive encodes and then constantly getting back to them and casting them multiple times and then having to scaled out of control by that point and then having multi-hits as well as multi-defense going off in the mid in the interim. I'm going to be sticking to that at the moment because I find a lot of the time when I play a new character, I kill the run by overdrafting. Largely as a result of wanting to look at all of the new toys. So I'm going to try and keep that kind of scope creep in mind here. I think I might just take some damage this turn. So we return. That didn't work. Oh, gosh. Fine. I'm going to flex potion literally just to get the ritual dagger kill. I thought that I already had another skill blade. The letter opener was going to be going off there for the supplemental damage. Alas, we lack. But then, immediately start healing back up. Good enough for me. Oh. 
should have done that beforehand. I would have gotten the strength and I would have already gotten the kill. Obviously, bear with me. There is going to be some time as I get used to these kinds of things. I've not even seen a three cost, uh, a three cost function yet. Okay, force shield costs one less for each function created this combat. I don't think that works for us right now, at least. Maybe like a zero cost kind of spamming function deck would have a lot of an easier time using that. Uh, Break Ruby and Smith, I think. Smith has got to hit the Apotheosis. We're running a relatively thin deck, so that Apotheosis is just an energy saved on upgrading all of the other cards as well. And, I mean, look, let's get rid of the shame at the absolute least. I don't need to throw out a tackle here, and I don't think I will. Alright. It's all fine, I guess. Come on, boost, or whatever the other one is. Um. Oh. oh, it is boost. That's fine. As long as we take long on the repair, we're totally okay as well. Uh, so. Let's throw out the replicate. Use a solid frail against the back line. Take out the front line with a ritual dagger. I can use cut through to try and set up defense. There we go. Use go to to draw into it. And then I won't have the energy to even be able to play it. Ryan. Why? All right. Spaghetti code. Uh, gain five block. When encoded, it's the first card. Increase its uh, block by five. I tried. We've got to get the the heal off here. Seems too important. Come on, there's the heal. All right, got some HP back. Now I can kill. Next turn. Now I can kill next turn. Is what I meant to say. Clearly. Good follow through. Buggy mess. No, and all the rest of them also no. Fortify is already... Already in the sequence as soon as we start the fight, so... Definitely want to upgrade that one there. Do I go now for the shop? No, I can get a little bit more money before we try and do something like that, I think. Not super jazzed about this whole affair of not being able to get the the fortress out this turn. It's a lot of self damage. Thank heck I have the uh, good old pantograph to rely on here. I kind of want to return go to, but then I can't even cast the card that comes back. I say go to, then return, then use solid copy. Flail's still in the deck, thankfully. In fact, there it is. Ophiosis into Flail seems one of the easiest choices I'll ever make. 13 up against 18 block, or do I just double defend? I think I just double defend. I wonder if there's a relic that just blocks when you in uh, when you compile. That'd be real useful. Right. Just 
just going to completely throw all of those. We're just looking for the dagger. There it is. Scored that extra kill. Anchor. Start with 10. Nice. Machine loop as well as optimize for loop and fine tuning. Eh, fine tuning. With, without much draw in this deck, fine tuning feels real, real rough. I think I'll pass. On all of it? No, I'll drop the blessing before to the very least. Okay. Spaghetti code gives us recursive strike, deals six damage two times in code. Uh, when you compile it, you also encode two copies of strike. So that would be for the next function, just has two copies of strike in it by base. Neat. Invoke. Gain six block in code. Compile. Gain energy equal to the total cost of cards in the sequence. That's pretty cool. I guess I'll also take Dark Dash literally just for damage here. Okay. And then we do that. And then we got a bunch of energy back. And then I go like, bop, bop, bop. You best believe there's a couple more bops coming. Get him. Fairy in a bottle over Cultist Potion? Scaling is really good for us. So I'm hesitant. Don't necessarily want the, uh, the scry there either. Ooh, okay, yeah, they are all fundamentally different. Fen uh, feeding Frenzy. Can I just say, like... Obviously, you know, I, I play a lot of games on the channel, so I, I, I revisit games often uh and i'm used to games updating and stuff like that um i have never seen the speed of updates and fixes and balance patches and stuff that is currently happening in downfall maybe not even in a released game like with non-volunteer mod uh mod sorry uh, non-volunteer modders this is ridiculous. Good work, y'all. Holy hell. Think it's time to uh, defend a little, I guess. Replicate increase some numbers. Get some defense out there. That is incoming of 23. Uh, yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to deal that damage before we continue scaling. Whoa, fungus among us. Kill all mushrooms, heal HP equal to their remaining HP, then summon two mushrooms. Okay, so we have a fungal warrior situation kind of going on here. The enemy is going to be using a lot of HP loss cards and HP loss benefit cards as well. Um, and they are going to be supplementing it with mushrooms that they can eat in order to heal themselves for 50% more effect due to the magic flower. And trying to hover, I believe, probably around half HP if they can. Uh, in order to get the Varsha and the Red Skull both active. Reaper does not exhaust and targets all mushrooms. Oh, he can also kill his own mushrooms in order to gain strength. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he's going to be playing on his side of the field for a while. Uh, and then getting real buff and hitting me with it too. I don't want that. Uh, do I want a spaghetti code right now? Yes. Shell? Gain one blur. In code. Huh, neat. Uh, there's also Terminator in code. If this is the last card in the sequence, function gains play this again. Neat. There's also Recursive Strike, which we've seen before. Um, I'm not going to be able to cast the card that comes out of this unless I take Shell. Unless I take Shell. And delay guard. Oh, that is... That is a spicy card! Baby, there's some Capsaicin content in that one. Hey! Play this on zero to gain an energy. Love that there's that impact there. Okay. Pocini and Octarius. Hmm. 
It's kind of remind me of uh, maybe an enemy in the jungle. The the alternate second floor mod. Okay. Um, if I cut through, I get both of those back. Hang on. If I boost, I get boost. Look, if I boost, I get boost back. Or rather, I get the function back and then I can cast the function, but then I can't use follow through. I really want to use follow through here. So I'm going to cut through. Why did that hit everyone? Did... Oh, it's, it must have been the compile effect of something that I had in there that I just cannot remember what it was. Uh, choose any number of cards to discard. Keep, keep the shell, definitely. I really want to play follow through, but it just seems like Lael's more efficient. Nice try, bud. No one block damage on that one. Giant return is great this turn. Nothing wrong with it even slightly. Enemies incoming with 24 damage. So I just... Do I even replicate here? How many more encode cards do I have? I have boosts. Yeah, okay. So I do have to replicate here. I'll defend because I've got the blur as well. I mean, boost should really be the next card in this. There it is. So we'll throw it out there. Curling shell two. Deals two damage. I mean, that's just good amounts of stuff on that flailing. We'll do that and throw out the delayed wrench as well. Cycle through those two and then return. That didn't work out how I expected. I should have just defended afterwards. I was thinking like, ah, yes, I will have played a function and then the return will be fine. But no, of course, I, I played another card after the function. Oh, my hand clap. Recursive summon orb. Whenever you create or play a function, gain four block at... This is, uh, this is the kind of thing I was talking about, although I was uh, imagining it in the shape of a relic. And deal four damage to a random enemy. Okay, so be six and six. Interesting. So yeah, like a like a mass function creation deck would definitely roll with that. Hyper Beam, retained. Deal 45 damage to all enemies. Put five voids on top of your draw pile. When retained, lower its cost by one. This combat. This combat. So if you have the ability to fetch something from your discard pile, play this. Pull it back, play it again. Interesting. Unfortunately, I think none of these are the kind of thing we want in this deck. Maybe Recursive Strike, at least, right? It's two triggers of a damage. Okay, I'll take Recursive Strike. Because it's two triggers of a damage hit, scales with uh, strength, obviously. Wow. Do we take the Calling Bell? We block the curse. Just get three relics, one common, one rare, one uncommon. We could also go for the extra energy I was saying that I wanted prior. Um, not resting at those sites gives me the ability to... Not really that much that I'm going to be doing at those. Upgrading doesn't really matter a huge amount to us anymore now that we have the Apotheosis upgrade. And I mean, it still matters a little bit, but not 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 a lot a bit. I'm going to go Calling Bell. The bell tries to toll, but instead we get a centennial puzzle as well as an ink bottle and a stone calendar. Hmm. We can get a maximum of two elites. Yeah. That's fine. We'll take the early shop, try and get the kill as quickly as we can. In terms of another smith, strike plus, not bad. Um, boost is, is pretty premium, so is spaghetti code. Because again, they'll all be upgraded in the second cycle anyway. 
But I guess the cards that are encoding are kind of exhausting in a way, right? I'm not getting them back. I'm getting some version of them back with other things involved as well. It's fine tuning just for the extra decks we're about to get from it. Front load seems good. Ooh, and a boost. Love it. Uh, I guess just defend and tackle because this retains. I can do that on the next turn. Although it does, yeah, okay, so it costs more to do it on this turn as well. Visual Dagger is getting real chonky right now. Turbo, retain, gain to energy, insert, avoid. Not awful. There's also the upgraded bit shift. Choose a sequence to return to your hand. Choose a card in the sequence to return to your hand against retain. And piercing shot, uh, deal six damage to all enemies. Upgrades to eight. Totally fine on all fronts there. Thank you, though. Going to replicate, fine tune, use return, and then repair. Getting back a card I can't play. Oh, an recursive strike as well. I wanted that one. I mean, I wanted all of them. Uh, okay. Boost. And then flail, and then we'll try and get that out and play it next turn. Cut through. Be ideal. Let's do it with spaghetti coat, I think, actually. Nice. Got a fortify, even more scaling there. Use the fortify and then follow up with a follow through. We got this. Even got it with the ritual dagger. There's another Fortify. There's Invoke as well. So Invoke makes a lot of sense when you're going for expensive compiles, right? But energy's not really a huge concern or problem for us anymore. Fortify would be fine, but just that, fine. Fine is fine enough, I think. Okay. We have Thunder Wave deals seven damage to a random enemy for each function created this combat. Upgrades to nine. Another repair, Repulsor. The first time you draw a status or curse uh, card each turn, exhaust it and draw a card. This is exactly the kind of thing that allows you to start taking the uh, the trash your own effect, uh, trash your own deck effects rather. Um, purity and statistic nature, as well as the Blood Vial, Gremlin Horn, and uh, Frozen. Maybe I just go for a removal here, get the uh, shame out of the deck finally. Removals are worth a hell of a lot to us. I don't really think any of the rest of these matter too much to me. And I do have a store next floor too. So we can hold off for that one. Love it. Go Apotheosis. Boost. If I go Delayed Strike, then I can actually even... Ooh, actually, no, it's fine. If I go Go To then return, then I get to play this still. If I wanted to. Which I still think I do. Okay, we do have Flail left in the deck. All's well that will end well with that. I'm going to fortify recursive strike here. Bring back a card that is unplayable. No. So we'll... Let's go with... Replicate recursive. Kills the backliner. We get this back. Wait. Wait a second. Hang on. Hang on. Encode two copies of Strike. I think this is...
casting strike twice in order to encode it two times. And that's where the uh, extra damage is coming from. Is it even doing extra damage? Or is it just doing a visual effect? I don't know. I'm confused by, frankly, everything. Just top to bottom. No clue about it. Um, guess I look into the spaghetti code, see if I can get some good defense. Not sure that really counts. Fine, I'm not going to get an upgrade on the dagger in this fight. I don't want to take too long there. Iterate! Deal 4 damage times 2 the, the end code. Yes, that's exactly what we're looking to carry our strength damage. Uh, safeguard, gain 10 block end code. Compile to gain 2 frail, sure. Upgrades to B13. Doesn't even decrease the amount of frail. Alright. Recursive. Oh, I can do this. So we recursive and then replicate. Didn't do it that time. Oh. No. I think the card that's doing it is the delayed slice. My bad. Do all that, then we follow through. Turn. Guess I have to apotheosis. I was planning on tackling. Wah. Too important to do that, I think. All right. I'm going to take some damage here. It's totally fine, though. Get the upgrade we wanted. It's a feature, not a bug. Whenever you draw a curse or a status card, gain one temporary strength and dex. Definitely the kind of thing that can uh, incentivize the other, as I was talking about. The powers of the things that I'm looking for to try and modify the uh, my willingness to take statuses. Bit late for a sea change here, though. Hmm. There's only one spikes on the board. I like the idea of going for flail and then fine-tuning it. And then what? I go to and then cast it again? Sure. I mean... If it ends the fight earlier... I ain't happy to do that right there. Just can't do that too many times. Oh, never mind. We've got the, uh, the memorial. We're all good. Rod of Bolstering Flame. Obviously, we have to take the Sapphire Key there or we don't get to the final area. Mm, repair, recursive, play it, and then I can't follow through afterwards, but that's okay. That's okay. Definitely got a Apotheose. Grade that by a damage each, I guess. We'll cut through. Actually, all the way to here, I think. Yeah, getting Spaghetti Code back in hand. And then I will return and then cast Spaghetti Code after that. Fortify. Special Carnage. Boost. Love it. Just giving us another good card. So the the fortify and like we got the 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 stat gain effects that we wanted. It's fine for that to be ethereal after that. In fact, it could even possibly be preferable. Boost flail, replicate, and then cast it. Ah, right. Okay. So again, I keep thinking that I'm decreasing the copy of all of them. No, the bronze score only decreases the copy of the first one. I should know that. It's being demonstrated to me correctly. I'm just tracking it a little bit weirdly. Or poorly, as the case may be. 
All right. Get right on that. Past Fortress. I think we're all good. So the double defend, good news, has already got full block for us. Use a simple strike three times here. And then scry as far as I can to get back to the ritual dagger for the kill, ultimately. Any more defense? Just return and defend will do it. Alright. Gimme. Got it. Strike dummy. Cards containing strike deal three additional damage. Hey, recursive strike. Does a sequence that has strike in it get named strike? Sorry, a function that has strike in it, does that end up getting named strike? Guess we're here to find out. Uh, sure. Orthiosis into spaghetti code. Yes. Front load is fine then, so it's boost. Yeah, that should be more than enough for me. I don't want to expend extra resources. I don't need to. So, fortify, flail, delayed strike. No, fortify. It's fortify, flail, delayed strike. Yes. I was thinking I was going to have a way to use iterate that turn as well. Recursive. Okay, Hasn't been compiled yet. Okay, so recur is the thing that I'm getting out of that. The key text there. There's a boost and a repair left in the deck. Would I prefer those to a replicate? I think so. Replicate is really, really, really doing well in terms of like being close to how the base game deals with a lot of the the extra starter cards for a character. Like, it's something that assists you in utilizing a mechanic that that character utilizes, and it's pretty, pretty good in the early game, right? But it's much worse in late game, because uh, there are other ways to accomplish its effect significantly better, which you find over the course of the run. Cut through here. Ooh. Interesting. Forgot the cut through was actually going to give us that back. Iterate. So this is two, four times. Three, five times. Yep. Okay, that multi strike decks. Fine tuning really wants to go in as well. I want a cheap card coming back. I guess I do actually this time. Let's go to. Fine, we'll settle for replicate here. Getting it back in hand and using past the sprint. Pulling up the follow through. It's pretty good damage. 300 damage in five turns. Regen not needed. Optimize also not needed. Iterate still good, but I I'm, I'm fine with how I'm running at the moment. Break that sapphire and then upgrade anything that has a compile effect to give me extra stats. Hmm. Got a merchant next floor. I don't know if I need this merchant, but also removing a card at each of the merchants would be pretty good. What's underperforming in this deck? Tackles. Because those defends get... They scale pretty ridiculously pretty quickly. Cut through is not great in this deck. Delayed slice isn't great in this deck. Replicate's no longer pretty good in this deck. Let's go for an event. Ooh! Upgrade all cards. I already kind of have that. Let's fight ourselves. Alright, Bronze Auto. Hmm. 
I'm going to boost recursive, not even worry. Sure, I don't get to cast this this turn. Eh, it's sad, but we're going to generate a pretty good follow-up. At least I had hopes. Guess we just eat damage on this one. Really don't want to double tackle here. Yeah, those tackles really aren't holding it down. Uh, okay. Let's iterate, fine tuning, repair, get that back to hand, cast that, and then follow through. Tungsten Rod, whenever you lose HP, lose one less. Or whenever you would lose one HP, lose one less, rather. Which of dagger isn't even that far from killing right now. I really didn't want to count, but I really did want to try. Um. Yeah, whatever. We got Pantograph and we got a rest in the next space. Perfecting fights doesn't really matter at all here. Ceramic Fish. Whenever you had a card to your deck, gain nine souls. Real late to find that. Nothing there that's new. Hit a Smith and it is now Fortify. Apotheosis before the go-to. Nice. Iterate is pretty much exactly the perfect thing to get out of that. At that point, for us at least. Do I even have two more zeros to go into that? Replicate and... It's not really. I mean, fortify and repair, get that back, pay the follow through, then return and just play a defend. Return being flexibly an energy boost if you cast it on zero is pretty neat. Feels pretty comfortable. Right, I guess I'm looking for something that'll defend us. Hey, boost, that'll do it. Early access, deal 15 damage, insert a random status, encode, compile, will insert beta builds. Hell yeah. And then the beta build inserts a random status, gives you 15 defense, and uh, the compile for it inserts a full release. I, I cannot wait to have an episode where I just try and exploit the ever-loving hell out of that. There's also infinite loop here, deal 6 damage, encode compile, add a copy of this into your hand and increase its damage by two. I like that. And even the brain. Don't need any of those, nor the blessing of the forge. We have killed the shopkeeper. We've gotten and broken all of the keys. We are on our way. Uh, don't love this, though. I'll delayed strike. I'll iterate. Mm -hmm. Then I solid slice and follow through. Seems to be the... Obvious follow-up there. It sets up a pretty good card for me to be able to play later at the absolute least, if nothing else. I don't like fine-tuning. It's going to be, like, multi-strike decks that I really want to put that in. I don't like it at the moment in this deck, I mean. Um, yeah. it's good enough for me. Ooh. Go for a Gotsu. Uh, I can't make the enemy vulnerable. Otherwise, we'd just kill right now. Hmm. 
The enemy's malleable. That's the reason I don't want to cast just solid slice first, if I can avoid it. Yeah, because they just get a bunch back anyway. 32. All right, well, at least at the end of all of this, I do have the ability to defend still pretty reasonably. Strength potion. Whilst neat, not necessarily the one I want. That could be the first card in the current sequence to the next two sequences automatically. Sure. Play that super early on, get a bunch more fortresses. I love that. Uh, go to Recursive Strike and then cast the card that comes out. Seems good. Uh, live forever. Okay, so you're casting the the three uh, six-bladed armor from Wish. You've got four by base. Uh, Fleeting Faith. Watcher gains one mantra whenever you play a card. Watcher loses five mantra at the start of her turn. Watcher's Divinity Stance is permanent. Okay, we should be careful here then. I'm going to Recursive Strike. That'll set up the next one, and then I'm going to Iterate. Removing all of the enemies. Laid it on there. Setting up some good cards for us to later draw back into. boost get a fine tuning on the boost and then spaghetti code i think for fun infinite loop is fine for getting more things into the the end codes i just don't think i need it i'll take overheat literally just for the damage then flail Okay, five. You lose five at the start of your turn, so that's okay. And he still did manage to make me weak there. Uh, yeah, we'll fortify and then delayed slice, giving us the decks. Then I just double defend if I wanna. And I does. Hmm. Shame we don't really have anything we want the uh, class default to hit anymore. Gain 16, block, deal 4 damage. Oh, sorry, take 4 damage and then deal 18 damage. Then, man, a lot of stuff going on with those. Let's go with the simple strike because it is simple. Replicate in class default, I guess. Just because we can. Oh, that's a big expunger. The enemy is going to put down a devotion, so they're going to be gaining to themselves every turn as well. I'm not keen on that. Guess I don't really have much ability to stop it, though. Ow. So just Tinker's Fortress double defend. Ooh. Tinker's Fortress and solid sprint for damage, I guess. No mantra for you. So follow through is already available. Definitely should. We can do that and then throw a replicate and then start going back off again. I only really want to go off when my character isn't weak anymore, though. That might be the first time we've had the stone calendar even trigger. Simple strike is a lot of damage. Gotta find some time to defend somewhere. 
Thank you for not being able to make me weak there. Much appreciated. Boosted burn for some defense. Follow through for even more. There's a ritual dagger in the deck that'll get this kill for us, though. I don't need to cast anything else there. Goodbye, watcher. I really like the boss fight redesigns. I can't wait to see the rest of the permutations. All right. It's time for a shopping spree. Ooh. I like this art here. Uh, wait. Oh, yeah, you start at the merchant, of course. Welcome back. The merchant now has... The merchant still has the strength it gained, uh, it earned from Soul Steel this run and gains an equal amount of dexterity. Good to be aware of that. So I should fortify. Turn. The enemy is dealing 9 damage away this turn. That doesn't affect me. I guess I can just follow through then. Hmm. I'm gonna go recursive strike here. So we get that back as a pretty pretty big damage cut. Then we'll use boost, compiling immediately. Then we can use this for all of its damage, the uh, solid fortress. This does have strike in its name. Is it being increased by the, uh, the strike dummy, though? So it'd be 9 damage by base. So we're missing an accounting for 8. 5 is from strength. 3 is from strike dummy. Yep, it totally works. You'll love to see it. Anything else I need to do here? Replicate even? Uh, no. I'd prefer to have an empty one if I'm going to go for a spaghetti code. Well, it looks like I'm quite liable to take a lot of damage this turn. Uh, should I pass? Yeah, go to an iterate or spaghetti code themselves or a much better follow-up to this. Ow. HP. I think we'll go with the spaghetti code because I'm weakened. I mean, look, iterate is still great. Flail again, too. Gotta love that. Just a whole load of deal and damage to the enemy multiple times here. Just even love the sound of it. Okay, unless I go replicate and repair, the rest of the cycle isn't going to give me a another function creation, so I will cast the delayed strike there, making it easy for me to get to. Nice. Sword Fortress is not. Defense. This is 27 plus 14 is 41. Uh, this is 38 total. Should have accounted for the tungsten rod. That actually may have ended up changing the outcome there. Follow through. Repair and go to even. That bomb's going off again? It's just rude. Stop having it be bomb time. Seriously, that can kill me. Uh, the merchant has uh, gotten a lot scarier. He's constantly using hands of uh, hands of greed now as well. It's just, uh, it's just a high damage card. They are a lot scarier. All 
All right, there's all my defense out there. Did I already use the ritual dagger? Apparently. Well, we've got our kill. Not feeling great anymore though. Virus. <laughs> uh, retain, deal three damage, transform all cards in hand into a minor beam. Minor beam is a zero cost, deal three damage in code. Upgrades to give you a minor beam plus, which does four damage. It itself does four damage as well. So you turn your entire deck into minor beams and then you have a bunch of free cards that deal damage. Um, this is great for like the zero costs, uh, the zero costs, zero costs draw and, uh, zero cost function and draw build. That's what that's for. Obviously not for us though. Hey, it's, it's good for, uh, for, for kind of laundering, I guess, in a fashion, your, your statuses and curses. Repulsor is just great here anyway, right? Because of the final boss we're about to face. Gain an energy for each status in your draw pile. Interesting. It's not bad. It's not bad. Definitely take Repulsor. I thought that these machine oils were going to be significantly more powerful than they've proven to be so far. So I do feel a little... A little... Uh, a little bit like... Oh, whoops. About them, you know? A little bit whoops. We get the 14 max HP, I think, just as kind of like a, a heal here. I don't think I want any of the rest of those, though. And in this area, definitely rest. Follow through. Perfect. Oh, okay. We don't even have an opening round fighting now. We go immediately into our typical combats. Okay, I'm gonna put boost there. And then I'm just gonna use each of these to gain uh, a point of strength and dex. Bum, 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 bum. If flail was in there, it would have increased the amount of times it hit. I am a little saddened I didn't do that, but strength and dex. Unless I wanna play repair now instead. Flail wants to go in a multi-hit card. Plus, I would have the ability to play it this turn if I used Repair. Sure. Okay. I love Recursive Strike getting hit with the fine-tuning here if we can afford it. Seems like it's not a problem at all. Will it compile to encode three copies of Strike with the fine tuning in it? It seems like there may be only one way to find out. Get straight past Haunted, don't even need you. Spaghetti code, yeah, that might be relevant. Yeah, three copies of Strike in the next one. So as soon as that encodes, it just encodes immediately another card with Strikes. It's pretty sick. Oh, now can actually negatively affect us too. Made us vulnerable and frail and weak. Hit us with the big three. Obviously, I got to get rid of aged. Apotheosis saves us an energy playing spaghetti code, so it's easy for us to play there. Let's try it. You gotta try it when it's offered, right? Oh, we have powerful cards. I just can't afford to play them. Uh, do I really just take 36 damage here? I don't want to muddle my hand. All's well. We only took 35 damage, so everything's okay. Oh my god, iterate and then class default. Okay, the full release, compile. Function becomes a power which activates its effects at the start of each turn. Huh. 
Alright, we'll have a, a little bit more of a think about that in a moment, but for the moment. Repulsor's gotta go out, so does Iterate and Class Defaults. Just pair it with the Defend. My god, I, I am actually pretty threatened right now. So I can fortify and replicate. But then I can only really cast the card that comes back. There's no defense in that. Cursive Cut gives us a hell of a lot of damage here. So it's 45, uh, 57, uh, 76 from Recursive Cut, and then 75 from Ritual Dagger. Is there a kill here? Yep. One down. Welcome back, I'm glad. It's... I've seen you again. It's I've seen you again is, is, is I guess, how I'm going to have to approach this. Ooh, simple strike is good there. Uh, oh my god. No, wait, this you. It's only when we compile we're getting the full release. Okay, cool. Beta builds just need it. Good defense. I'm going to let all the tackles burn out. I don't need them. Solid boost or just remove Icky? I could remove half of Icky. And then I'm going for solid boost. One of the big reasons I wanted to go for solid boost there is because in the next cycle, if I get follow up and I've got two of those in the deck, if I got either of them in the opening hand, I would have just been able to cast that and go. Uh, speaking of casting and going, let's go go to. Perfect. Iterate is already up the fortify, not bad. Uh, recursive card is already a kill on the ironclad. Oh, so nothing's gonna happen until I end my turn at least? Sure. I'll end my turn here so I don't trigger being bottled then. There's the follow-throughs. In fact, we can even use one follow-through, simple strike, and then follow-through again, which is lovely, as far as I'm concerned. No, full release. I wanted to play you. Ooh, dupes of cards count as new cards for the sake of the, uh, the Fleeting Earth. It's, you know, that, that's typical with the base game as well. It's still just, in my mind at the absolute least, worth noting. Okay. I really wish Flail was the next card that we got. Deep shame, that isn't it. I can fortify and then have all this go off. Function becomes a power, which activates its effects at the start of the turn. So it's literally just iterate damage at the start of each turn. Oh. Okay. Well, it's my bad. I I assumed it was instantly going to play the power rather than like cuz this is very expensive. But then secondarily, uh it, it looks like because it's tied to a power card rather than the function functioning as a power, 
um, because it has to come to your hand and then you have to cast it afterwards. Uh, it's not going to take any of our strength, any of our decks, any of those related kinds of things. So the alpha, beta, omega of this, the full release effect, you really want to just pair with like draw, vulnerability, those kinds of things, right? Um, rather than rather than your damage or your defense. Oh, that's unfortunate. Please stop making me ouchy. Also, my gosh, I just cannot have any strength to live me. Some strength, sorry, any uh, non-weakness. There's past release. Guess I'll play it. Excuse me? That generated a card that dealt more damage, though. Uh, okay. So it just doesn't appear on the card, but it does do it. I like that, at least. Okay, 21 by 3, plus 25, plus 18. So 21 by 3 is uh, 63, plus 18 is uh, 81, plus 25. Okay, yeah, we're definitely at lethal territory. Now doesn't actually fight you themselves anymore. They are just supporting the units. Okay, I was terrified that I was just about to die immediately after that. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, I said. Good lord. Okay, God of Life heals 2 HP whenever I play a card. Energy Thief adds curses to our draw pile. Also adds a void status card. Uh, Now heals HP whenever she deals unlocked damage. Uh, whenever I play a card, she gains a mantra. Oh my gosh. So three of these effects, the Energy Thief, Feeding Frenzy, and Fleeting Faith are based on the enemies that I fought over the course of this run. Love that. Super cool. Um, I, I am deeply scared right now, though, as well. Uh, okay. I think what I do here is boost, go to, it's fine. It gives us a solid boost. It's an okay card. I'm probably not going to use it though because I'm going to iterate and then I'm going to fine tune that iteration. Oh, I can go past Repulsor. Didn't want to go past Repulsor. This is exactly why I wanted the uh, the iterate already out there in the front for class default. So glad that came uh, came together. I'll do that. Throw out a recursive strike. It's going to have a lot of damage in. Uh, I mean, that's ethereal. It's already going to remove itself. That's ethereal too. Love it. So I cut through. Do I really want to cut through or do I want to leave this for another card? What is the other card? Just fortify, really? Okay, I'll cut through. I may need the defense next turn. Well, it immediately generated. Oops. <laughs> I made some cool cards. Flawed. At the end of your turn, transform all cards in hand into random status cards. Well, definitely have to play that. Let's go spaghetti code first. Uh, oh my god, on iterate as well. Uh, boost for strength. Yeah, I'll do that. 100%. I'm going to lose a lot of cards in this hand, and I'm fine with that. So, pass the rate goes through. It's a heck of a lot of damage. Then we use a return for the extra.
My sequencing was all out of whack there. Oh my gosh. This is brutal. This is Ascension 1. This is Ascension 0. Oh gosh. Uh, I'm bewildered and I've aged. Oh my god, fortify. I actually wanted you though. Oh. That's a lot of damage! Yeah, yeah, unless we found defense there. That was, like, we are already... Already dead. Just didn't know it yet. Good lord. Now, there are, like, a fair few easily identifiable weaknesses in that final fight. One of the largest being, we have a lot of ways of gaining decks. We don't have as many ways of using our decks. Like, that's why the defense had to stay in the deck. That's why the tackles were far worse than them, despite, obviously, the giant, you know, in a vacuum disparity between the two. So we needed to pick up more cards that gave individual defensive triggers. Um, I was hoping follow through was going to be the way that I was going to be approaching that. But then in that final fight... I had to use so much of my, or lost so much of my energy rather, to voids as well as having to play out curses in hand. So I didn't really have the ability to play a function card and then follow through after it, or at least didn't have the ability to do that consistently. Like how much of this deck even says block? One, two, three, four, five. Six, but typically when we put boost into another card, like, it's really hard to play it. Seven. Uh, eight. Yeah. Eight cards in a 26-card deck. That's not awful, but when your enemy is deck trashing you consistently... Oh, but I'm also reducing the size of my deck over course of casting. I don't know if that was that bad, actually. I think it's... I, th I think largely the, the, the failure to generate enough energy to be able to consistently use our functions and follow through thereafter was, uh, was a bit of a problem there for us. Also, I popped all of my potions on the first fight, assuming that, that was going to be the final fight. You can't goof me again, though. I know the goof this time. We've unlocked Constructor, Separator, and Terminator. We've seen separa uh, Constructor and Terminator here um, in the course of the run, so they can already get generated by things, apparently. Uh, and Separator deals 6 damage when encoded, if this is not in the first or last slot. So, if it's in the middle. Although, there might be something like a, a relic that changes the amount of slots that you have at any one time, or even a power that changes the amount of slots that you have at any one time. Um, hence this not saying middle. Increases damage by six. Interesting. Well, well, well. This is one hell of a character. I cannot wait to continue digging my teeth into them, but that's going to have to happen in the next episode. He's going to be continuing daily from here on out as, uh, as per the typical schedule now that I am back in the recording chair. But for the moment, rather than drag on, I'm going to say that my name is Rapsing. The name of the game is going to say The Spire. Downfall specifically, there is a playlist in the description down below with all of my content on this game, past, present, and future, as well as a link to the Steam, Dis uh, Steam Discord, as well as a link to the Steam Workshop page where you can pick up Downfall for yourself, as well as a link to the Discord of the developers of Downfall, where you can go in order to submit your uh, your feedback, as well as talk about the, the, the mod in general. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.